I'm Dean. I'm the dad. Laura, I'm the mom. And I'm Chrislyn. I'm the daughter. And together we are Family Plot. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, let's get the housekeeping out of the way uh, real quick. Uh, first of all, if you want to help us, there's Patreon, which is a monthly donation, two levels, a dollar and three dollars a month. Uh, and our special for June up until June 21st. Anybody who makes a $3 donation between now and then will get put into a drawing and join us on a future episode. And we will announce that that person on the air. Absolutely. Very nice. Um, so if you have the money, make sure to do that. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. At, and if you don't have, if you, you can't do a monthly commitment, I understand that. You can always just throw us a dollar or two through Buy Me a Coffee. If you enjoy the show, please share it on social media. Share it with friends. Share it with family. With everyone. And if you don't enjoy the show, please keep, keep it, it to yourself. So what are we talking about tonight? Well, in the 1700s, several European artists created an entire room out of amber. You know, as opposed to... Uh, like drawing DNA out of it to to make giant dinosaurs for Jurassic Park. They, yeah, they didn't do that. Do that. That would be a colossal. Yes, that would be a colossal incident. It didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, they made this entire room out of amber, including panel panels, statues, candle sconces, and so much more. Uh, eventually it was gifted to Russian Tsar Peter the Great, who incorporated it into the Catherine Palace. During World War II, an army composed of German nationals invaded the castle, stealing the room. Wait, room is mine now. And now, no one knows where it is in this Isn't History Amazing episode and the 200th episode okay. of the Family Plot Podcast. <laughs> There needs to be like applause and fanfare there. 200 episodes, that's quite. Yes. That's quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. And and I definitely wanted to, I mean, and it's kind of fitting, like episode one, we were we talked about Rasputin. Episode 200, we're talking about the Amber Room. So, you know, when we hit milestones, we go to Russia. Oh, is that what we do? Oh. Well, I mean, we want to go to Russia right yeah. now. We're good. Well, it was wasn't episode one hundred our that Jatloff Pass episode. I think so. Yeah. I, so yeah, I guess that's true. Well, I, it's nothing I noticed until now, but yeah, big episodes. We go to Russia. <laughs> really big area, so that's and big. it is a really big episode. Two hundred. Yeah. Jeez, Russia, <laughs> what a country! All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> two hundred episodes. I don't know what I would would have been doing for two hundred episodes if we weren't doing this. Uh, and I've learned so much doing this. Yeah. So, uh, especially when Laura brings up someone like, we should do Ching Shi, the Chinese pirate. And then I look her up and find out how amazing she is. And I really like the more I think about it, the more I feel like history is not kind to her. Because her names were like, I mean, if, if you translate them to English, her names were like Zeng's wife and Zeng's widow. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> she successfully she successfully retired after leave, leaving a mat leading a massive pirate fleet. Maybe she deserves a name of her own. Yeah. <laughs> Give her like lion's eye or something like that. Like, come on. 
So yeah, I, I have learned so much doing this and I am so happy. And there will be, uh, you know, a uh, few call outs. Yeah, a few call outs, a uh, few friends sent messages, things like that. So that'll pop in here and there around the show. Um, but with let's put all of that out of the way for a moment and just deal with the amber room. The amber room. The amber room made of amber. That's the name. Ernest Hemingway. Wait. Is Ernest Hemingway in this week's episode? Not unless he comes in, storms the Amber Room, chases off the Nazis, and saves it for the Russian people. But I don't think that how, that's how this goes. I, I don't think that's the way it happened. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was, and I've seen this on uh, uh, Expedition Unknown. So uh, I didn't say his name. Don't cry. Now I have to... Now I have to do the, the sting. Well, yeah. You said, said Expedition Unknown. Huh? The only person that I focus on in Expedition Unknown, which is basically the main character, is Josh Gates, your man crap. Josh Gates. And, well, he is a pretty cool guy, I will say that. He is a pretty cool dude. We know other cool dudes. Yes, we do. Cool we do. dudes. Cool dudes that we get to hear from this week because. Yes. For example, let, for example let, let's start out with one. Yeah, let's start out with a, with a uh, message that was sent to us by our friends at Graveyard Tales. So, Graveyard uh, Tales? I'm going to do this in my best uh, Adam sure. cadence. I, I can't imitate the voice, but I'll try to get the cadence. Hey, y'all, congratulations on turning 200 episodes. We remember when we talked originally and you were just starting. Hard to believe you've made it to 200 already. Keep it up. Oh, and happy birthday, Chris. See you soon, Adam and Matt. Yay! I love that, and thank you. And Chris made, does, does the little finger heart did thing. The little heart. She, she did the little heart. I did picture. the little heart. Thank you. I'll try to get a picture and give, get Dad to give it to you. Um, well, that's awesome. Do you want to get us started out talking about the Amber Room? Yes. Uh, Amber has long fascinated European nobles, especially the Russians. Uh, in 1701, construction began on the Amber Room inside Charlottenburg Palace in what was then known as Prussia. It was designed by Baroque sculptor Andreas Schluter, and Danish amber craftsman Gottfried Wolfman. These two worked on the room for six years before other amber craftsmen were brought in to continue to add to the creation. Over six tons of amber were used to create the room. That's a lot. Hey, imagine all the dinosaurs you could clone with that. Let's not clone any more dinosaurs, please. I love dinosaurs, don't get me wrong. Make masks of them all the time, have sonas of them. Don't care. Let's not bring them back, please. We would all die instantly. But maybe we need that. Maybe we need a test room to just shove some people in to be like, ah, you're gonna die in here, it's okay. So, in 1716, Tsar Peter the Great visited the castle where Frederick William I was showing the Amber Room to him. Um, of course, uh, Fred, uh, Peter the Great loved the Amber Room, uh, and he admired it so much, so vocally, uh, that to cement their alliance, Frederick William I gave the room to Peter. It was shipped to Russia in 18 separate crates. So that's a lot. So what, they just broke down the room with like a pick and they just gave it all to him? Um... The amber our 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 room is mostly gold panels that the amber has been laid over, or gold gilted panels that the amber has been laid over. You gotta say though, some serious dedication. I mean, have trouble waiting an hour for a grocery delivery. Can you imagine being so dedicated to? Keeping a good relationship with somebody that you would just give them a room that you waited for 
for over half a decade? Real. Like, I'm just like, why? Why did you do that? How? Why? Why? Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I get it if you're like really attached to the person or something. Not easy, but it's like it took six years for this room to get built, oh, and then you give it to. It took over six years yeah. to build this room, and you just give it to somebody in boxes. How are you sure that they're gonna get it? Like, yeah. you're not. Well. Yeah, I, and, and I mean, it was it, actually it was more like fifteen years because if you look at the timeline, the construction started in seventeen o one, and then he gave. So I mean, he didn't even they didn't even get to enjoy the room for that long. No, they didn't. <laughs> I'm just like, did you get bored of the room, or are you just trying to like write your <laughs> He likes diamonds better. Let's translate. Oh, here, let's. Is it? Oh, jeez! Wow, what a deal! So, Chris, before we move on to the next part, would you like to take a few minutes for my corner? I think I would. And maybe you could. We could even catch up with you. Wait, wait, wait! Here, here. I gave say give me those claps. Where I, are they? I gave Krista the clap. Thank you very much. What are you doing today, Mom, Dad? I'm here. Uh, I'm not working, so I'm amazing. Hey, that's fair. <laughs> um, I personally am one to be caught up with. I'm gonna talk about how my summer's been going and what we've been, what we've kind of been doing. Okay. Uh. Well, so, I haven't gotten out of the house much, but I probably should. Um, I also have a bunch of art that I've been doing. I've been kind of doing, like, commission-type things. I've been doing um, some art for people on TikTok and stuff like that. So, if any of y'all would like to see that, I'll ask Dad. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what else? I mean... Make a slideshow of it, and I'll start us a TikTok. <laughs> You can also uh speaking speaking of um our Facebook group, you should respond to my Facebook friend request. You sent me a friend request? Yes, I did. On Facebook? Yes. Yeah, so you can join the Facebook group. Fair enough. Yes. I haven't checked my Facebook in a while, guys. I know. You're you're really too young for for, for Facebook. Your generation is more into X and other things, but we don't call it X. No, we still call it Twitter. Yeah. Even, even if he changed it, I'm like, you crazy to think I'm gonna start calling it X now? I'm, I'm serious. You're serious. I'm serious. You're serious, not serial. I'm serious. Okay. I'm as serious as I would be with that one person we don't talk about on the show. Sharon Kenny. That's exactly right. Why'd you say her name? Mostly so I could use the sting. Dun dun dun. I hate Sharon Kenny. And the stings again. Dun dun dun. I love that sting. Uh, well, I've been doing a bunch of art. And I've made myself some new characters. Yeah. Cool. I have been keeping contact with friends and trying to keep myself like busy around the house. I'm doing a pretty mech job, but I'm working on it. <laughs> um, that's about it. I'm a pretty boring person over the summer. Well, I, I, I don't think you're ever boring, but, you know, I always appreciate the update. It's just yeah, getting they're... started, too. That, that's okay. Yes. It's yes. just getting started, which feels so weird to me. I'm just like, oh, by the way, to everyone who is part of it, happy Pride Month. It's June. Yes. Happy Pride Month. 
definitely. Big supporter of Pride here. Uh, in fact, uh, there's a, a, a town not too far from us, St. Joseph, Missouri, where I worked their first three years of their Pride. Nice. And I was uh, pretty happy about that, pretty proud of it. feel like uh, it was a good thing for me to do. So, yes, happy Pride Month. Part of the community. I'm Pam. So, I had to say something. There you go. Well, is there anything else that you want to talk about in your corner or to catch up with you? Or should I hit claps and let you talk about uh, the Amber Room in Russia? Let's talk about Russia. Okay. We should ignore the little uh, accent I have now. I caught on to it. I can't let it go. Um... Initially, the Amber Room was installed in the Tsar Winter. Yeah, right, Tsar. Tsar. Yeah, yeah. Winter House in Saint Petersburg. In 1755, Serena Elizabeth. Is that Tsar? Serena? Yeah. Serena. Serena. That's weird. Just what is that? Just what is the Z even there for then? Okay, Russia. never mind. This is a Russian thing. Okay, good. Uh, moved it to the Catherine Palace, where it was an Italian designer. Was oh, that was my okay. Where a an Ita- Italian designer was hired to fit the amber room into its larger space, and extra amber was ordered from Berlin. Haha, <laughs> that's my teacher's name. Anyway, that was my old teacher's not mine. Uh, at this point, the Amber Room was became referred to as the Eighth Wonder of the World. Upon completion, the room was covered 180 square feet. Was covered in so much amber and other precious stones that it was said to glow. Uh, the amber panels were backed with gold leaf and current estimates put the value of the room at the time at 146 million in modern dollars. Man, imagine having that much money. I wish. That would just make everything so much better, wouldn't it? Serena, or Zarina, Zarina, Zarina Elizabeth used the room as a meditation chamber, while Catherine the Great used it as a space to gather with friends and family and Alexander the Great. Mm-hmm who was quite the amber connoisseur. It used it as a trophy. Okay, first of all, this room is very expensive. Yes. I would not use it as a gather room for friends and family. Well, you're also not royalty. Well, I'm not royalty, but you're you know right. what? I still think royalty would want to not get that room broken or something like that. It's expensive. Yeah, but at the time that she made it a gathering room, a family, there wasn't TV, there wasn't radio, there wasn't internet, so families tended to gather and just talk, talk, eat, read. I still think people could break it somehow. Oh, I'm sure they could, but um, I I know that there wasn't like TV or anything like that, obviously. But like, you can still cause a commotion without like TV. What if fight started in there about something? I'm sure. Well, I'm sure, but remember, this the czars were the rulers of Russia. So if you were in Catherine the Great's amber room. And invited to talk about sports, and you got all uppity and broke something. Uh, I think. Okay. You, yeah, I was going to say yeah. you. You would. So I think that would be on most people's minds, and they would be just like doing their best to try to fit in whatever they were sitting in, and you know, focus on the conversation and not moving too much. Yeah, that makes sense. So since we've talked about this, I feel like we should have another. Word. Okay. Absolutely. Let's take a moment for a word from another podcast. Hello, Twisted Humans. 
Do you find yourself wanting to know more about the latest murder, conspiracy, cult, or haunting? Then this is the podcast for you. In 1952, there was a record high of UFOs reported. 1,500 sightings. There has been evidence of human sacrifice, devil worship, and it is haunted by more spirits than can be counted. A family of two adults and two kids reportedly saw a giant flying thing with glowing red eyes. And meanwhile, the family's nanny that helped Veronica to care for her and Lucian's children was found bludgeoned to death in the basement of their family home. I'm Alicia. And I'm Sierra. And this is Twisted, Twisted and, and Uncorked. That sounds like it would be right up our alley. Yeah, yeah. But most definitely. I mean, I think I'd listen to it. I'm Rituals? Yeah. Witches? Gang. Human sacrifice. Human sacrifice. Go be a human. Ugh. All right. Look, during World War II in 1941, Hitler launched Operation Barbosa, which hurled three million soldiers into the Soviet Union. A group of Russian art experts who had managed to hide and protect art treasures in Leningrad came to the Catherine Palace to remove the amber room, but the amber had dried out and began to crumble. Thinking quickly, they covered the room in wallpaper. However, when the German army group north took the palace, they were not fooled by the ruse and managed to disassemble the room in 36 hours under the direction of a pair of experts. The Amber Room was then shipped to a castle in Konigsberg, these days known as Kaliningrad, where it was assembled as part of a museum. Alfred Rodi, Rodi? I'm not sure on the pronunciation. Rode. It's a German name. So it could be Rode, it could be Rodi. Studied the room for the next two years before he was advised to disassemble the room and store it in the castle basement. Eventually, it was meant to be transferred to Germany. However, a series of unfortunate setbacks left the amber room in the castle's basement. So when the RAF began to extensively firebomb the Konigsberg Castle, and the advancing Red Army began to pelt the castle with all artillery fire, the location of the Amber Room was sadly lost to history. This was the last location we knew of it to actually be. Well, that's sad. Um, maybe we should take a moment for a word from our sponsors. Yep. Yep, word from our sponsors and, and maybe a word or two from some others wishing us well. Hey, Family Plot, this is Dan B. Fierce, one of your favorite guests. I just wanted to wish Krista a happy birthday and you guys a happy 200th episode. This message is from Backlook Cinema Podcast. Uh, they are congratulations on reaching 200 episodes. Podcasting is a harsh mistress, and I'm so glad that you've managed to consistently churn out episode after amazing episode. Keep up the great work. Once again, that's from our good friends at Backlook Cinema Podcast. Well, that surely brightened the mood for our... 200th episode? Yeah. 200th episode, yeah. And I feel sponsored. I also feel sponsored. Also, a big thanks to Dan Bugby for, for, for his well wishes there. That was nice. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Um, all right. So let's go to the disappearance. Uh, since then, there have been many searches and rumors regarding the Amber Room. Several eyewitnesses claim it was loaded onto a German ship that was almost immediately torpedoed and sunk by the Russians. In 1997, an amber panel entitled Feel and Touch was rumored to be auctioned off, auctioned off. A group of German art detectives tracked down the seller and found the piece. Unfortunately, 
It was being sold by the son of a German soldier who had helped pack up the Amber Room, and the son did not know the importance of the piece. Two teams claimed to have located the Amber Room. One was, team was German and the other Lithuanian. The Germans believed that the Amber Room was located in an old sil silver mine, while the Lithuanians claimed it was located at the bottom of the lake. Of a lake. Neither location proved to have the Amber Room. Further, the Germans themselves have made the whole, whole search more difficult. As the Reich fell, important artworks were sent far and wide across Europe in the most distant, out-of-the-way places. Some things were even moved well away from Europe. And they didn't keep records of these things. They didn't want people finding them. They, were, they, they considered it treasures of the Reich, and they were just going to take them out of the world if they could. They didn't want to destroy them, but they didn't want anybody else to have them. Yeah, it's a very expensive thing. And here's my thing about that. I feel like... Both rooms could have had traces of the ed. I mean, it the amber, like for the am from the amber room, was most definitely like carried around a lot and like put in a lot of different places, so people couldn't find it. So I wonder if maybe had it had been in both of those places and there were just no longer traces. I I, I am not sure. I don't have an easy answer for that, but um, I, I, there's more to that. There's more to, to tell about the disappearance here. Um, like I said, as the Reich fell, the Germans just started sending uh, their treasures away. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of stuff we haven't found. The Amber Room is not the only thing missing. Yeah. Um, plus, there are rumors that Stalin moved the original Amber Room and had left a copy in its place. And what the Germans stole was a fake. Recently, a German ship was discovered, which had been torpedoed near Poland. The ship, which was responsible for ferrying German citizens out of the path of war, has been investigated with multiple unopened crates on board. It is believed some of those could hold pieces of the Amber Room. In 2011, Josh Gates searched for the Amber Room. Wait, moment for my hero. All right. Uh... Uh, Josh Gates searched for the Amber Room in an old German mine because a German train carrying two large guns had six additional cars, and there is no documentation to state what was in those cars. Uh, so, however, with uh, so many cars, like six box cars, they thought that it was possible they had taken the Amber Room and hid it in the same mine as they hid these guns. Uh, however, Josh was not a, able to locate the room there. Further, he followed a truck that had driven out of Konigsberg, and the driver of the truck claimed he had seen a mirror in the truck similar to those in the Amber Room. However, upon examining the location where the truck dropped off those things, he was unable to find it there as well. But now, there are no further leads as to the location of the Amber Room. A group of British scholars believe it was destroyed in the castle at Honisburg. Whether that was due to the RAF firebombs or Russian artillery, either way, they believe that it has been destroyed and passed out of history. Since then, the Amber Room has been recreated by a joint effort through Russia and Germany. And the recovered feel and touch piece is part of the recreated wonder. It can be seen in the Catherine Palace. As for the original, perhaps it's still out there somewhere, hidden away, just waiting to be found. I almost wonder with like how all of this is put out and how we keep saying, well, hey, there's a lot of things missing, you know, it's not just the Amber, Amber Room. I wonder if it's, like, just been destroyed, like, most of it has been destroyed, or just it's, well, I mean, it's definitely fucked. It's, like, hidden underground or something. Because, I mean, we don't really think to look underground unless Well, I mean, some people do the uh, caves that Josh Gates was looking in when his show actually went and did the investigation. Um, 
you know, those were definitely, they were in the woods. They were under their caves. They were yeah. underground. They found underground places where there had actually been. Right, you know, but, like, I don't just mean, like, caves and stuff. I mean, obviously, us as the human race, we're curious. We're going to look at caves. But usually, unless we have, like, a metal detector, we're not going to look underground. Oh. Right, but that's what I'm saying, though, Chris. They have started doing some of that stuff. They've started using the LIDAR, which is the radar that looks underground. They've started doing some of the stuff that people who are looking for this. But you're absolutely right. It could be someplace random that nobody's found yet. Absolutely false. And and it could have been destroyed in Konigsberg Castle. Even though they did not find much amber looking through the castle, I mean... They don't need to find much amber. If it's, if it's destroyed, they could have gotten rid of the evidence as well. I mean, it's... And, and that, there's some truth to that, because Russia has denied any responsibility if the Amber Room was destroyed. Uh, they, they say... Because they do not want the world to think that it was their own people that destroyed it because part of the group attacking that palace was was the Red Army, the Russian Red Army. So, Right. I, I mean, I guess that makes sense. I just, this is a very interesting episode. I'm just like, hmm. Anyways, I'm going to move on so we don't keep talking about this. Um, <clears throat> in addition to all of this, there's also to believe, believed to be a curse connected to the Amber Room. Some victims are believed to be Alfred Rode, who died in of typhus. Typhus? Typhus. Typhus, along with his wife, while the KGB KGB was investigating the Amber Room's disappearance. A Russian general who died in an auto accident after doing an interview about the Amber Room. And a former German soldier who also spent much of his time investigating the Amber Room, who was killed in our barbarian forest. Yep, he was actually murdered in a B Bavarian forest by person or persons unknown. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, yeah, I, so that's kind of interesting. Although I think that I think the curse is a bit of a a reach. I mean. There's more evidence of of the uh, curse of the Tutankhamun's tomb than there is of the curse of the Amber Room. But it is a thing people talk about, so felt like we had to cover it. Yeah, yeah at least bring it up. Yeah. Uh, now, the Amber Room has appeared on television, not just Josh Gates' Expedition Unknown. Yeah. No, yeah, it's... Surprise me. I mean, it is a part of history, and I usually when it, there's a part of history, I expect someone to like at least make a documentary or a movie about it or something. Well, it, it it's more appeared in segment shows like Mysteries of the Museum and uh, History's Greatest Mysteries, where it got an episode all of it on its own. But yeah, so uh, it, it's one of those enduring mysteries that does pop up on TV from time to time. Uh, like I said. It's been recreated, um, but the question still remains. Is the Amber Room still out there somewhere? Um, and it could be. It very easily could be. Just as easily as it could be uh, underneath whatever remains of that castle in Konigsberg, which has since had something else built on top of it, mostly a lot of people think, so that People can't go and investigate the site and see if the Russians were responsible for destroying their own artwork. So that's a theory that a lot of people have, is they built something on top of it so you couldn't investigate the place much anymore. That makes as much sense as anything. Yeah. Uh, as for myself, man, I want to believe it's out there. And that, that Polish ship with all those unopened crates on it sitting at the bottom of the sea just waiting to be explored. I'm so curious. I I, I, I don't want to dive it because I imagine that without the tra any training, I'd probably die. Well, but yeah. No, probably about it. Absolutely, you would die. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I would, I would love to find out if it was there or just, you know, I, where would your, 
where would Germany send it? You know, where would they send it that it's so far away and so out of the way that people wouldn't find it? Antarctica. I don't know. You know, there there are all of the stories, too, about a bunch of high-ranking Nazis getting out and going to other countries and living secret lives. I mean, it absolutely could have funded a hundred of those more criminal, hideaway, terrible people and just have been piecemeal. They said that the amber had dried out and was starting to crumble. They very easily could have taken pieces of that room and just littered it away. And it absolutely could have been lost to history. I mean, it very well could just be like scattered around the world and we would never know. Right. And, and they, there are, there have been German enclaves in different parts of South America for quite a while. Um, and, and I mean, and most of them, there's nothing. How do I want to put this? There's nothing sinister about them. They're just places where German culture has settled, and there's still a lot of people, uh, German descended people living there to this day. But, like, uh, I remember seeing like travel videos where people are in South America drinking German style beer and dancing like to beer hall song. So, yeah, it absolutely could have gone to South America. It could have gone, I mean, it, it could have been sold, but you think it would sold, pieces of it would have turned up. I mean, look at, there are still great big undiscovered areas in... Well, there's a bunch of land. That... New Zealand, in Australia, in there are beautiful continents that are very mildly explored. So, oh, yeah, I mean, there are so many places in this world still that have the ability and still hold wonders for us. That there's also a lot of places that usually humans don't travel to because mm-hmm. you know there's a lot of things that are deadly to humans there or just humans don't really go looking there because they don't think about it there's yeah a lot of, i mean i mean there's a, there's a state that has no quads I, I wouldn't go there yeah and maybe the germ maybe the germany thought of that and was just like I'm gonna send those there well you know um heck rommel was a big German general who was in Africa. So maybe some of his people or his former people stashed it somewhere there. I mean, it, it, we're not going to answer this. It's It's been investigated by people who have boots on the ground, and we just don't. But it's just, there's so many places it could be. And the fact that they, that, Initial initial searches of the castle revealed some pieces of amber, but not as much as you would expect for a room that covered 180 square feet that was covered in it. And I, I, I wish I had been smart enough to bring my phone here so I could show you what the room looks like, because there are pictures of it online. And, and it's... It's beautiful, but I find I find it a little gaudy because it's so monochrome. It's so colored by amber, but it, it's amazing. And uh, you know, so I they could have sunk it to the bottom of the ocean somewhere. It could be sitting in Africa somewhere, and it could just be gone. Or it could be sitting somewhere in Russia. Maybe Stalin did a, a, arrange to copy it. But that just seems like you're muddying the waters at this point. You know what it reminds me of, to be totally honest? It what? It reminds me of Beauty and the Beast. Uh, it reminds me of some of the rooms in the big country house that they had in The Sound of Music. Gorgeous! Oh my goodness. Yeah, and that's with none of the candelabras lit. That 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 whole room is covered in candle. So when they light them, I mean the amber just picks that up and just yeah yeah that's what the yeah, candelabras. Oh my lit. goodness! So you can see the depth 
Um, and I mean, and just think about how many flies are trapped in there and how many dinosaurs we could, you know. Let's let that go. Make, let's not okay. do that, please. Heck, we'll probably find out about it. You know, Ernest Hemingway will show up. Uh, he'll be dragging. He'll have a rope in his teeth as he walks out of the crawls out of the ocean, dragging all these boxes behind me and going here. Here's the amber room. I found it. You're welcome. And then he'll go have a drink. I'd agree. <laughs> I feel like maybe he'd be dead after that. So well, he's been dead for a while. So yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> rope the ghost while dragging that stuff out of like nobody knows there's just a rope with a bunch of freaking boxes it's set up on a on a flat land and, and besides what it's our 200th episode so he has to appear at just like sharon kinney had to uh, no no stop talking about her yeah you talked about her she's part of the she's part of the episode she was she's not anymore I'm just saying. No, nope. some people no, saying had to appear in this episode. Josh Gates had to appear. Ernest Hemingway. Last week he did. But that brings us to the end. Two hundred episodes. Ernest me, you Hemingway guys. had to appear. We did. Although before we get to our part of the ending, I want to leave some room here for people to say happy two hundred. Right. So let's take a moment for that. And did we ever? Oh, yes, we, we were sponsored. Good, 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 good. So let's take a moment. Wow, that was amazing. Yeah, the amount of all wishes, I mean, dang. We appreciate you guys. Thank you very much for your well wishes. Yes, we appreciate you very much. Um, thank you for listening, as always. Uh, thanks for keeping us in the Good Pods Top 100. I love getting that email every week. Uh, thanks to Bill Berent. That last name is spelled B-E-H-R-E-N-D-T. Uh, Bill is the guy that did our theme music. And if you need music for a project or an event, Bill's your guy. You can reach him at Bill Berent at sbcglobal.net. Uh, also, uh, Bill is one half of the Rusty and Dusty podcast. So uh, catch that if and when you can. But is he the Rusty or the Dusty? I think he's rusty because I want to say the the one post I've seen about it, he referred to his friend as Dusty. So, yeah. Um, let's see. I uh, want to thank Paige Elmore, formerly of Reverie Crime Podcast, a an amazing true crime podcast. But she's also got an amazing addiction to Canva, uh, which she has combined with her own Krista's artwork to make some unique lo unique logo art for us. Thank you, Paige. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Thanks to Aaron Gnerk of the Big Dumb Fun Show, who continues to promote us locally. Join us next week as we go to episode 201, and we look into the murder of the Hammersmith ghost. Ooh. How do you kiss? You know what? I'll ask you next week. Bye! <laughs> Thank you.